like cats, if you like my cats, then ye and ha on over to my Everpress shop. Link down below to get your very own Cowboy Cats Crew Net. 10% of the proceeds go to Cats for Adoption Kia. Limited time only, pre-orders end soon. Don't miss out. Thanks for chatting, partner. Hello! Welcome to another exciting reading vlog. In today's episode, we will finally be catching up with the internet and reading the Heartstopper series for the first time. I've had the series on my radar for a hot minute. Can't believe I haven't read it yet. Everyone I know loves it. I'm ready to love it too. Heartstopper is a coming of age graphic novel series, originally a webcomic by Alice Oseman. Its premise is sweet and simple. Boy meets boy, boys become friends, boys fall in love. It's also now a series on Netflix, so we really need to read all of these as fast as we can so we can watch the show alongside everybody else. So that's the challenge for this week. I don't think it's gonna be much of a challenge, to be honest, because they're just so cute. It's gonna be so cute. I'm fully prepared to have the most wholesome reading week of my entire life. Today, we are going to the Japanese Cherry Blossom Garden in Hustle. So I'm wearing my little denim flower embroidered dress because it seems all too appropriate. I've got pink socks to match the blossoms. I've got a cute book. What else can you ask for, right? Right? I'm so excited. So I'm gonna get started reading this on the train. What else is happening this week? I ordered a terrarium for my snails. So we're gonna set that up together. I'm so excited. If we set up the snail terrarium together in a video, does that make it a business expense? Maybe! I'm also starting my Dutch class up again, so lots happening. Let's do this! Alright, so I read the entire first heart stop on the train yesterday. It's so cute! It's so cute! I had butterflies in my stomach the whole time. It's just so pure. It's so easy. It's great. I definitely see why this was a successful online graphic story just because of how accessible and simple but also makes you feel a lot at the same time. It's also not a lot of reading. It's a lot of facial expressions and following the story through feelings. It almost reminded me of, and this might be a little too niche, I was really big on the Sims 2 community. On the Sims 2 website, you could make stories. You could take pictures of your Sims and like storyboard a story. This is very reminiscent of that. I remember following other Sims stories. It makes me very nostalgic. Had I known about this when it first came out, I could definitely see myself turning on my computer specifically just to catch up on what happens next with Nick and Charlie. And that's what I'm doing now. I'm already reading number two. I'm already this far into it. I love it so much. I can already tell that this is a series that I will reread whenever I feel like I'm in a slump because it's just fucking nice. Oh, one second. Hello? Do you want to come find bugs with us? Uh, what? I need to find roly poly bugs. You know those little gray ones that roll up? <laughs> I need to find them for my terrarium. Um, maybe. <laughs> so, as you heard, catching bugs. I'm getting a terrarium for my snails. I got the dirt filling stuff. I got the terrarium. I got some cuttlefish bone for their calcium for their shells. But what I don't have are bugs that eat their poop. So then it's a self-sustaining little ecosystem. I can buy roly poly bugs online for like 15 to $40. Or I can go outside and get some myself. So I'm gathering my friends and we are going bug hunting. This is inner child healing. I'm back from my class. I've never been in a language class with so many go-getters. I think that's part of being in the higher levels, I suppose. It's less of a requirement and more so because you want to learn more and use more. The people sitting next to me were like, are you in the conversation class? I'm like, no, but should I be? I'll sign up for another class. So I did. If you didn't already know how my name is Ellie, I moved to build when I was 21 to marry my husband and I've been living here figuring out my life ever since. Right now I'm in the middle of transitioning my degree in a nutshell. So I'm diving back into Dutch. My goal is to be a teacher. So in changing my degree, I'll be able to do that soon, 
dinner. It'll be great. But now we're home. I have some research I have to do for a paper. I have homework from my Dutch class. And of course, we gotta finish Hard Stop for two. We just have to. It's a cold, gray, rainy day. We're gonna put on a grout fit, make some tea, do some responsible things, do some cute, fun things, and just end off the day nicely. I'm so excited to finish this one. We'll be halfway done then. But first, let's make some tea. Can we do a quick flea market haul? Because both Saturday and Sunday, my friends and I stumbled across various flea markets and I found some gems. So let's do that. On Saturday in Hustle, we found a whole table full of Goosebump books. Martin at Nederlands and Oak. I have no idea how you say holographic in Dutch. I'll Google it, I promise. But shut up, shut up. Two bucks. Ugh. And then at the same place, I found a borderline mint condition Bolex film camera. I made my first student film on a camera just like this, but a little bigger, a lot bigger. I have this tattooed on my body. It's so, ah, and it works. So I want to get filmed for it. This is a top to your favorite find. But wait, there's more. Cause yesterday when Alex and I went looking for bugs, we stumbled across a Sunday one and we got friendship rings. Mine is a dragonfly. How exciting. 10 cents, bedazzled. Mentally, physically, spiritually prepare yourself for the next one. Are you ready? Deep breath. Exhale. Ah! A snail watering can for your plants. 50 cents. <laughs> but then something very magical happened. I found this Tupperware brand piece of Tupperware. My mom used to have a bunch of these. I think she still does, to be honest. It's her favorite color. I needed to have it. So I went to the lady and was like, who will cost it? And then she was like, three euro. I am our head of Tupperware, huh? And I was like, yeah, I could grab it. Because Tupperware brand is a big deal. But then we're passing another table and they have a gratis box. Gratis means free. Tupperware brand, the same color, gratis. You know you're almost 30 when Tupperware makes your day. Woo! So fucking excited. I need to make a pie, I guess. What else do I put in this? My secrets. Thank you for tuning into this episode of Flea Market Finds. Hoping to stumble across many more this spring and summertime. Let's go read some Heartstopper. And that dilly dally. some tears in my eyes, but no crying, but I got tears in my eyes. Oh. Ah! The second one was even better than the first one. I was not expecting to like this this much. I like it so much. <gasps> Heartstopper one was very cute and adorable and wholesome and great. This one goes deeper. We have trans representation. We have deeper emotions, bigger themes. Oh, I get it. All aboard the hype train, chew fucking chew. Oh, it's so cute. I'm having the best time. <laughs> Good morning. Good morning. Day two of Dutch classes. Day three of Heartstopper. I'm on the third one. I started it last night before bed. I love this series. I love it so much. I believe that this deserves the hype. I believe that it is as cute as everyone claims. This is as heartwarming as it gets. This might be my new comfort thing. I couldn't be happier. I was gonna pack this in some foil and bring it to school, but I changed my mind. Everybody shut the fuck up! It's here! It's here! Yay. Okay, and now we can set up the rest! I got them a golden pothos. I also got them this piece of bark. Alongside my bugs, I got some moss from their natural habitat. The wood louse I found the other day are loving this tomato. They're so big. Now we can introduce our snail. Terrarium on my desk. I could just watch them all day. 
I'm fast as fuck, boy. The jungle's cog looms. I just did so many hours of homework and studying and then put on a face mask, finished Heartstopper Volume 3 and took a shower and I just feel pristine. What a productive day. What a good balance of things. And now I'm in bed with some nighttime kiwis. Cheers to today. What a day. I know that I and everyone and their dog have said ad nauseum how cute this series is. But holy guacamole, this series is so cute. The representation in here is so much more bountiful than I anticipated. Not that I thought that it would be lacking. But it's just so effortless and well done. <laughs> if I remember correctly, a really big gripe I had with Radio Silence is that the dialogue of the teenagers weren't terribly realistic. I remember leaving that book thinking nobody talks like this but this series this is exactly how teenagers are and it's not in an outcast kind of way if you're not a teenager anymore it's not for you it's more so in a transportive way it makes me feel like I'm in high school with them going through all these experiences with them I'm feeling the camaraderie I'm feeling the support I'm feeling the struggles I'm feeling it all it really is so good I personally didn't understand that I liked girls until I was 18 years old and so I didn't get to have a high school explore of experience with my sexuality because I was just so compet and chronically monogamous and I also never necessarily came out I just sort of started seeing who I wanted to see and kissing who I wanted to kiss and having not had those experiences in high school I feel nostalgic for a place I've never been while reading this graphic novel series but in a really sweet and touching way I'm so impressed with this I really just didn't expect myself to be enjoying these as much as I have been I knew they'd be good but I thought I'd just walk away being like yeah three stars it was cute it was light it was easy, but I'm not a teenager more so it's not for me. I think this is for everybody If you have any inkling to want to read this I definitely encourage you to because it's just so heartwarming and sweet and simple and to the point If you're in a reading slump, I'd read this perhaps you felt misunderstood growing up I would read this if you feel like having a nice time with reading without having to put too much effort in if you need to escape read this. I brought the fourth one to bed. I am so sad that it's the last one, but I'm so stoked that the series is on Netflix so I can still live in this world because I'm happy here. I'm gonna stay here. Um, oh, oh my gosh. <laughs> I forgot that I was pressing flowers from the cherry blossom garden in here. Gotta put these somewhere safe. I'm gonna go to bed and we'll check in tomorrow. Good night. the whole day is done. I may have done something. I didn't know we had a secondhand bookshop and I also didn't know that they had English options. So rapid fire book haul. Picture this. You go to a bookshop just to see. You're thinking about how much you love Heartstopper and it's a great feeling. So you get two books to stay in that happy gay place. We got I Kissed Cheryl Wheeler by Casey McKiston, the infamous author that wrote One Last Stop and Red, White, and Royal Blue. Haven't read either of them. I have One Last Stop though. A month before graduating from Willow Grove Christian Academy, the principal's perfect daughter prom queen Cheryl Wheeler kisses Chloe Green and vanishes. Yes, what a cover, absolutely. And they matched. So the funny thing about this one is that I saw it and outwardly exclaimed to a bell, ah, but the other cover is better though, isn't it? And I said it louder than I anticipated. And a girl across the table giggled and said, I know the feeling. Bitch, if you're out there, we're friends now. So I pulled up the other cover and showed her them both. And I said, take a vote, which one do you prefer? And she prefers this one, and so do I. But I can't complain, this one is also quite lovely. It's sap again, it's cute, and it's written by two married women. We support it. They look so good together. And you know what else looks good together? This extremely unrelated, but still matching book. There's no such thing as an easy job. I've been on my TBR for a couple of years. A woman walks into an employment agency and requests a job that requires no reading, no writing, and ideally, very little thinking. But as the title suggests, there's no such thing as an easy job. Yeah, I'm gonna read this with my friend, Abel. She influenced a few of these decisions, such as 
I don't know what that sound was. The Housekeeper and the Professor. Also a book that has been on my TBR for a hot, hot minute. This is about a professor who only remembers math. Not relatable. And every single day his housekeeper has to remind him who he is, who she is, etc. Apparently it's very profound and philosophical and has you wondering what makes a person a person if they don't have their memory. All that jazz. It's short. It's gorgeous. Abel gave it five stars, so I bought it. Now this whole time, we are looking for a certain hunger. All the hot girls are reading it. I want to be a hot girl. This is the thing. If you decide to go to physical bookstores with one book in mind, you are not going to stop until you find it, which just leads you to multiple bookstores, picking up crumbs along the way. And so that's what happened. One place suggested that we pre-order this version, and I said no, because this version exists. So we're just gonna wait, but there's something that I love about bookshops is going in, having a cover draw you in, having you read the back, and picking up something on your gut feelings alone. And that's what happened with this one. Who is she? Maps of Our Spectacular Bodies by Maddie Mortimer. It says it's a coming of age story during the end of a life. And the inside pages have cells, close up microscopic, I don't know, science. I read some pages. It seems really poetic and kind of hard to read, but in a good way. In the way of, you know, when you're looking for a challenge intentionally. There there were 25 reviews on Goodreads for this one, and I just went for it because it felt right. Who is she? We'll find out. While we were at the first store, my friend said, I loved White Teeth by Zadie Smith. I gave it five stars. It's one of my favorite books. It's so good, it's so good, it's so good. But the cover looked like this, and it was so expensive. But guess what I found at the used bookstore? White Teeth with a significantly cooler cover. It's a generational story. Abel said it was very sarcastic, made her giggle out loud. I've never read Zadie Smith. I hear about them all the time online. It is time. She's thick, but I try Trust a bell, so I got it. As we explore further, I discovered Pigeon English by Stefan Kelman. This is just another pleasant bookstore find that I went on gut feelings alone. I found two of my favorite books this way, and so I trust this method. Newly arrived from Ghana with his mother and older sister, 11-year-old Harrison is the second best runner in the whole of year seven. He races through his new life with his personalized trainer, the Adidas striped drawn on with marker pen. He has an equal fascination with the local gang and also a pigeon that visits his balcony. Pigeons are second to snails in my opinion. They're so cute and so misunderstood. I don't want to hear it. A story of innocence and experience. It won a man booker prize. I've never heard of this one. Have you read it? It seems so good. So I got her too. Next, as I showed you earlier, I have been nourishing my inner child, especially the inner child that I wouldn't allow to like girly things. She's coming out now. So a lot of the books that I buy in Dutch are not just children's books, but sparkly pink books for tweens. And I'm thriving. This is no exception. I don't know what it means. <laughs> Dagboek van en Mutz. Mutz is like knitted hat. I did ask Lior. I hope she. Oh, I got an audio message. Oh my god, I read those as a kid. So it's not really like a bad word, but it's like it would also not be the kindest thing to call somebody. It's basically a bit messy and all over the place, and maybe a bit of a dog, a bit of an idiot, maybe. Like if you call your friends that, you could do it like in a loving way. But it is maybe something you'd say about yourself, like oh, I've been so nuts. If you've lost something or something like that. Thank you so much, Liara. You heard it here first, folks. A day book from a messy, all over the place kind of gal. Very relatable stuff. It's a girl's diary. This one's about her throwing a birthday party. Something that I thought was extra special is that uh, a local artist colored it in for me. If your name is Ellie and you live in the northern section of Belgium and your parents recently donated your dag book, Von and Mutz, hit me up because I totally have it. Thank you so much for your annotated copy, Ellie. I appreciate it. <laughs> and last but not least, the find that made me actually scream because some of you know we are reading In the Mountains Echoed by Khaled Husseini this summer in the Pack of Pages book club. And I said that this was the last book from this author that exists that I haven't read yet. That's not true. There's a children's book by Khaled Husseini. And for some reason, it never crossed my radar. I was determined to order it online because I've never seen it before. Secondhand, mint condition, mere weeks after I was informed of its existence. The watercolor illustrations. I feel so fulfilled. That's what I did today. I had class for three hours and then I fucked around in the city with my friends and spent so much time looking at secondhand books. I have a test tomorrow. It's 8 p.m. <laughs> I haven't done any reading. Today was just a day. It was just one of those days that I went with the flow, which never happens. And you know what? I'm allowed. So I'm gonna go study and sleep and hope for the best. Thoughts and prayers to me. I'll see you tomorrow. <laughs>
hello happy thursday i woke up this morning with the feeling that i'd get a migraine so i stayed home from class and took it easy made a bagel sandwich that was almost as tall as me and i'm starting to feel a little bit better i might have warded it off for the time being we'll see i'm going to continue in this theme of taking it easy and finally dive into heartstopper four i think a part of me has avoided it because i don't want it to be over how lucky are we to have something so special to say goodbye to i got a comfy outfit on i've got a big mug of tea let's finish this series <laughs> No tears, but wet eyeballs. Oh. <laughs> Hello! It's the end of the week. I read all of Heartstopper. I had the best week ever. Over the years, I've been trying to get myself to like romance, and I'm starting to find some that I connect with, and Heartstopper is definitely one of them. I think Heartstopper is a series for anybody who questioned their sexuality growing up. Even if you're an adult now, I still think they're just so accessible and easy to enjoy, no matter what age you are. I would say if you're not really into romances, maybe even give the first one a try, because the fact that it's a graphic novel, it's like you're watching a movie, it makes it so much easier to fall into. If you like found families or just books with strong friendship connections, this series is for you. I just fully understand now why everyone is screaming from the rooftops about this series. I totally get it. You really are just a fly on the wall with these characters, but you also feel like you're a part of the friend group. There's so much more than just the romance. There's a great discussion about mental health and what role a relationship plays when one person in the relationship has a mental health problem. There's trans representation. It's just a bunch of kids having a great time while teaching us some very important lessons along the way. The second one was my favorite. I really liked the second one, but the rest got four stars. This is easily a favorite series. I am completely invested. I cannot wait for the next one to come out. Apparently there's a fifth one coming out. The hardback in October and the paperback in February of next year. Will I have the patience to wait until February knowing that their stories continue in October? I don't, I don't know. I don't know. But for now, at least we have the show to tie us over. I started watching it yesterday. Thank you so much for tuning in to the most wholesome week of my entire life. As you saw in the book haul. I don't want to leave this cute gay space. I've got so many great sapphic romances on my TBR. Maybe I'll do a whole video reading sapphic romances. Is that something you'd be into? Please let me know. I'm gonna get going and dive into one of those to be honest. Friendly reminder that it's crunch time and there's only a few more days to pre-order the Cowboy Cats crew neck. Support the channel and donate to Cats in Need in Ukraine. Links down below. And as always, thank you for clicking, thank you for caring, and thank you for being nice. We'll see you in the next one. Bye!